Good morning. I am Lori Walker, and by the grace of God, I am serving as your temporary pastor. Uh, welcome online in views to the Sandwich Federated Church. Uh, we welcome Kristen back, uh, and we thank Judy for filling in. Although we're really happy that this frees up Judy to... Do you notice the arrangement up here? Yes, the first practice for bells after church today, and we're very excited about that. Thanks to Judy for hanging in there with trying to figure out the logistics of safe bells in this COVID time. So we are excited about that. Uh, are there any other announcements that didn't make it up here? Okay, let us begin our worship. Our call to worship. With steadfast love and growing faith, we come as people of the people of Christ. With prayers of hope and songs of joy, we come to worship God, the eternal and everlasting. With thankful hearts and humble prayers, we come to give God glory and praise. Here we are in person and online as people of faith and hope to celebrate the good news of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for all the love that you show us each and every day. Lord, we pray that we may come today with open hearts and open minds and come to worship and listen and praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Precious memories on seen angels sent from somewhere to my soul. How they linger and burn near me and the sacred past unfold. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. Sacred scenes unfold in the sweet by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore in the sweet, in the sweet by, and by. by and by. We shall meet on that beautiful shore. Support to thy precious bleeding side. Precious memories, how they linger, how they ever flood my soul. In the stillness of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. In the stillness, of the midnight, precious sacred scenes unfold. Precious sacred scenes unfold. Precious memories. Draw me nearer, blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Remembering that Christ died for our sins, that we might be forgiven. Let us now, with faith in him, confess our sins to God and to each other. Let us please follow along as I provide voice for our prayer of confession. O oh God, what a debt we owe you. You have given us all things in Christ, and yet we withhold from you the honor and glory that are yours. Instead, we pay tribute to idols of our own making, mock your truth with empty praise, and put your patience to the test. Forgive us, O God, and by your grace restore in us the image of your face. Through Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Let the heavens be glad, let the earth rejoice. 
Let the seas roar with laughter, the fields shout in celebration, and the forests sing with joy. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. And now, in that joy that you are able to enjoy each and every day, turn around now and greet your neighbor as it is so good for us to gather as a forgiven people. They are good and energetic waves. You're getting so good at this. Yes, we have to get good at the nonverbal. And to you online, we greet you in the peace of Christ. Yes, yes. See, even as you keep talking, you keep waving. It is so good. It is so good. Yes, I, I can feel it. You know, we're, we're getting good at reading eyes. I said the other day, I said, I can tell you're smiling under your mask. They're like, eh, no, really, you can. Your, your eyes say a lot. So now we turn to the children's time. We hope there's children out there watching. We hope you're going to engage with children today. Certainly, they look to you as models of faith. We talked last week about the vocabulary of being a Christian, that words mean something different or even aren't familiar to children that are not raised in the church. Children, do you know the word glory? Glory. That, that is a word that's out there, isn't it? But Christians, we use it differently. You see, glory is that winning thing, right? To have a hero and, and we give them glory. It's that honor that someone enjoys who has perhaps won. The thing is that what Christians do that's different is that we don't seek glory. We don't want all the glory. Instead, we're folks that give the glory to God. As a matter of fact, children, you'll see this sometimes when someone wins a race. I brought my medal. My grandson walked in as I was leaving. He's like, okay. I said, I'm using it for the children's sermon. Well, after that, can you give it to me? <laughs> can I then have it? Because who doesn't want to have a medal? It's a nice one. It's heavy. It's real. I'll tell you more about it. But the way what Christians do sometimes, you see on TV when they win a race and all the glory's going to them, they go, just a simple way to give that glory back to God. And then you can tell they are a believer. Our dear Lord, we thank you that you, you have taught us what true glory is in that we celebrate your glory each and every day, that all that we have and all that we can be are all to your glory, dear Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Holy One, true and living God, through the message of your word and the power of your spirit, make us imitators of the Lord, Christ Jesus our Savior. Amen. Our Old Testament reading today comes from Daniel 2, verses 19 through 23. That night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. He said, Praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to the scholars. He reveals deep and mysterious things. He knows what lies hidden in darkness, though he is surrounded by light. I thank and praise you, God of my ancestors, for you have given me wisdom and strength. You have told me what you asked of me and revealed to us what the king demanded. And now I offer you an opportunity to stand, if you so wish, to listen to our New Testament reading. It is from 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 6 through 15. Remember this, a farmer who plants a few seeds will get a small crop, but the one who plants generously will get a generous crop. You must each decide in your heart 
how much to give. And don't give reluctantly or in response to pressure. For God loves a person who gives cheerfully. And God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As the scriptures say, they share freely and give generously to the poor. Their good deeds will be remembered forever. For God is the one who provides seed for the farmer and then bread to eat. In the same way, he will provide and increase your resources and then produce a great harvest of generosity in you. Yes, you will be enriched in every way so that you can always be generous. And when we take your gifts to those who need them, they will thank God. So two things will result from this ministry of giving. The needs of the believers in Jerusalem will be met, and they will joyfully express their thanks to God. As a result of your ministry, they will give glory to God. For your generosity to them and to all believers will prove that you are obedient to the good news of Christ. And they will pray for you with deep affection because of the overflowing grace God has given to you. Thank God for this gift, too wonderful for words. This ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Our dear Lord, we thank you so much for your words. We pray, Lord, by the power of your Holy Spirit that we might understand your message for our lives this day. Amen. Yes, be seated. We like winners, don't we? No? <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, heroes, though. We like to put them up on a pedestal. We like to give them glory. You know, people love glory. You like to bask in glory. Isn't that what they say? The glory of success, the glory of a hero. You know, glory motivates people. Uh, it tempts us as well. It tempts us. It's not just so easy as I shared in the children's sermon. I like the children's sermon because, you know, you can just make it easy, right? Just sim simplify it. And then we get old and it gets complicated. So I had to think about it, whether I would tell you this story. But, you know, I will and trust the Holy Spirit to um, have it mean something because it's a true story. So this is um, actually um, the first place playoff or first place uh, in state for football when I was the superintendent at Plano. Now ask me why the superintendent gets a medal. <laughs> I know now. <laughs> it's so after they retire and they do a children's sermon, they have an example. <laughs> or perhaps that's another sermon. I don't know. But, you know, on the way to this, um, and it, it was, um, yeah, it was the second year we weren't supposed to win it. And on the way, we played a Christian high school, and which will go without name. And in the lead up to the game, you know, they were demonizing us. You know, we're just a small town like Sandwich, right? And we have a farm implement for a mascot. But yet they were saying we were the grim reapers. So yeah, that whole play to demonize us. And the game comes, and, you know, all the, rah, their, their buses pull in. And little did I know, we go through the game, and we won 14-0. Well, after the game, guess what? They come to me, they're like, Lori, <laughs> they brought a cross. I'm like, How? What? This huge. I don't know how many feet, 12 feet, I mean, long. How did they get it here? Well, they had to bring it on the bus, you see, two, uh, two by fours, you know, and nail it together there. But now that everyone is gone, and here's the cross on their side. 
I don't know what they were going to do, if they were going to raise it when they got points. I, I don't know. All I know is they left it, and I really didn't think we should just leave a cross on, you know. So, yeah, we carried it off the field. I was glad the press was gone and didn't see that picture. Um, but it is just something that has stayed with me. Now, you know, we had a Christian athlete organization. We prayed before the games. We did go on and win. I can't tell you, though, that when we won, people were pointing up and giving God the glory, but I know we had Christian athletes out there. Um, hmm. But, you know, you can't just... It's not just so easy to give glory to God. It's a, it's a little bit complicated, isn't it? And... <laughs> We just finished reading the book of Daniel, and I know that was like last week's news, but, you know, I couldn't just leave that because Daniel is a wonderful book, and it's got classic stories in it for us, right? Now, it's good for us to remember that um, Daniel was a young boy in Jerusalem when um, Jerusalem was besieged by King Nebuchadnezzar. We think that he was the boys taken from there were probably 12 to 17. You see, King Nebuchadnezzar went into the temple and got some of the ornamental things, whatever was of value that he wanted to grab, and he took them and put them in his temple, one of those plays of my God's better than your God kind of thing. And um, he also then took boys. He said, you know, take the boys that are without blemish, the ones that are handsome and smart, you know, take those boys. Um, and so Daniel and his friends were amongst those boys that were taken. And then they were put through this system of indoctrina indoctrination, right? To Because if they could indoctrinate them, then they could raise them to then rule over their own people. So part of that, they even changed their names, so that's where we got, um, I'm not going to say all those names, but the change names, you recognize Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? The, and, and Daniel's name was Belshazzar, yes, which we don't say that often, but they didn't argue with changing their names. Um, they went along with that, right? But then they tried to give them their, the king's food, and they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to eat anything to defile ourselves, right? But I'm thinking these are young boys in a strange land. Why not eat the king's food? I think that would be when in Rome, do as the Romans do. But no, these boys remain faithful to God throughout this three-year period of indoctrination. And after that training, uh, they went to the king, and the king said, oh, my gosh, these boys are sharper than all the rest. Um, yeah, we're going to give them quite the jobs here. So just prior to our reading today, King Nebuchadnezzar ordered, uh, he had had a dream and none of his wise men could interpret it. So he ordered that all the wise men should be killed in the country. Well, that would include then Daniel. And Daniel's like, wait, we haven't had a chance. Give, King, give me a chance to interpret your dream. Now, the trick, of course, in all of this was that, of course, the wise man couldn't interpret it because the king wasn't sharing what the dream was. Well, if you don't know the dream, you can't even make a, a stab at it, a guess. The wise men are like, it's impossible. But Daniel said, give me a chance, and he prayed to his God. He prayed, he asked his friends to pray, and that night the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. And then... Daniel praised the God of heaven, and that was our reading this morning. And I think this is, the reading is the foundation of that idea of giving God the glory. Because you have to come from a place, from a place where you say, praise the name of God forever and ever, for he has all wisdom and power. He controls the course of world events. He removes kings and sets up other kings. He gives wisdom to the wise, knowledge to the scholar. This was what was in the heart of Daniel, his belief that even though he, his temple had been defiled, he was in a foreign land, living as an exile, alone, yet he had that rock-solid belief. 
And so when he interpreted the dream, and they're like, the king's like, oh, Daniel, you'll interpret the dream, right? He said, no, but there is a God in heaven who reveals secrets. And he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. So you see, Daniel gave God the glory. It would have been so easy. Yeah, I know what the dream is. Hey, me. You're in a foreign land. You could easily do that. But no, no, he gives God the credit. And then the king, after hearing it, what did the king do? What was the king's response? Truly, your God is the greatest of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Glory was given to God. Now, of course, the king doesn't remember all this. I mean, he is an evil king, and so it wasn't quite all that simple. But for a moment, he got it. But then later, later, with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were indeed thrown into a furnace for refusing to bow down to the statue that King Nebuchadnezzar had constructed. King Nebuchadnezzar's memory was short. But this time, King Nebuchadnezzar looked into the furnace and he saw them dancing. And he saw a fourth, not just the three, a fourth. And he recognized that, oh, come on out of the furnace. Come out of the furnace. Praise to the God, he said. Praise to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Again, glory was given to God. Now, more time goes on in that book, and we have a new king, King Darius. Now, Darius liked Daniel, but the other officials were jealous of him, so they tricked Darius into making a decree that for 30 days you could only pray to the king, otherwise you'd be thrown in the lion's den. The king was upset by this. He stayed up, he fasted all night, he didn't sleep. The next morning, early in the morning, he went and he found Daniel alive. And what did he say? I decree that everyone throughout my kingdom should tremble with fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and he will endure forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed and his rule will never end. So I ask you, in the book of Daniel, who, who's the hero? It's God. God's the hero. It's not Daniel. It's not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Who is glorified in all of this but God? God is their hero. Now, we are critical, I think, of, as we read the book, that the kings are a little slow to get it, and then it you know, takes something so extreme, and then they forget it again, right? Okay, hold that thought. We turn to the New Testament, and now we talk of a farmer, a farmer sowing seeds. But of course, the story's really about us, okay? Don't be deceived. You could kind of view it like, I think, a Monopoly game, right? Who wins, right? How, who, how do you sow the seed? Well, and how do you play Monopoly? I think the best thing, tell me if I'm wrong, is to buy all the utilities, if you buy all the utilities and then you big as, build as many hotels as you can, I think that's what's going to work well. And certainly in planting seed, Brian, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm thinking, yeah, you're planting a lot of seed, right? Put it all, in what the Bible tells us is indeed put it all out there. All that you have. All that you have. All that your heart tells you to give. And I think this is a great lesson during the pandemic because for whatever reason, the pandemic is causing people to hoard things. But then you might say, eh, not so quick, not so quick here. That, it's maybe not smart <laughs> to put it all out there, right? Isn't that a little bit irresponsible? You won't really win. You should really hold some back. You shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket. You know, don't just make decisions with your heart now. Don't do that. Use your brain and do some calculations. 
you see, there we go. We're a little confused. We're playing perhaps too much to win, to earn glory. You see, perhaps that whole idea of indoctrination has happened to us. It's happened to us with our culture around us. And what we've really learned in our culture is about the capitalist economy, right? Our motive to make profit, to treat everything like a business. We think that every dollar we have, we've earned. Where this reading reminds us of God's economy. In God's economy, every seed we have comes from God. He supplies it. Every dollar we have is by the grace of God. In God's economy, generosity yields generosity. Give cheerfully, and God will generally, generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. You see, it is God alone who gives us the capacity to give. And God is the one that provides all the seeds and the bread to eat. And in the same way, it says he will increase our resources, our abilities yet to produce more and give us a harvest. What do we want in our harvest? A harvest of generosity. You see, and then is the surprise ending to me as you read this is that the result, what, what do you want is the result of your life? What is it? Is it a medal? The result of the ministry is that they will give glory to God. Huh. Huh. Did you slip and think you'd get a little credit for helping to save the, the Jews in Jerusalem? To give to those that are in need right now that someone would pat you on the back? No, of course not. No, we give. And we pray that indeed we are showing God's love, God's caring, and that the glory will be given to God. Not that we will gain glory, but that everyone will see God is the hero of the story, the hero of our lives, the lives we're living this day. Glory be to God. And may all who see us, all who know us, say, Glory be to God. Amen. in our joys and in our concerns. Indeed, God is glorified then too. I, I apologize. I don't remember exactly the outcome of softball. We don't have Debbie with us. I think it was second place. You don't know. Okay. But let me tell you that um, Debbie uh, has shared with me that the that she is now under a two-week quarantine, so that's why she's not sitting there with us. Um, Open Door is testing everyone. Debbie was tested yesterday. She's very anxious about the results of that test, but she's feeling fine. Um, but please pray for Debbie's friend uh, who tested positive uh, for the coronavirus, and pray for the rest of the residents and the employees um, at Open Door, which, of course, now is shut down for a couple weeks because of that. Um, I had the joy this week. Uh, Jane went with me. We visited Susan at Cedarhurst. Uh, she was so pleased to uh, see us and to visit with us. It was certainly uh, a, a joy for Jane and I as much as it was for Susan. She sends her greetings to you. Uh, so it's so important that we remember the people that aren't with us right now or able to be. Uh, I also ask you for prayer for Judy. Uh, she had her test last week, but she's not getting the results until tomorrow. So she meets with her doctor and uh, gets those results uh, 
indeed pray for her and her doctor during that time. And we want to continue our prayers for Carl's dad, uh, for Dean and Glenda's niece, uh, who's facing breast cancer surgery this week. So the other concern I have that, um, yes, is that we just heard that Bob and Lori Knight were in a serious accident. Um, they, Bob is out of intensive care. Lori is still in intensive care. Um, they are in West Virginia. Uh, so that, of course, complicates things. Um, yes, Lori's in intensive care with concern. Uh, both legs uh, were very much injured. So please, uh, yes, keep them in prayer during this serious time. While they're in West Virginia, we know that while we are far, God is near. His Holy Spirit is there with them. We pray for the doctors. We pray for them. Um, Karen and Mike from Delaware will be going down to be with them. Um, and so we will keep contact uh, through, through Karen. So we know that God is good. God is all-powerful. Let us turn to him with all of those concerns that we carry and all those joys that we have. Let us turn to him in prayer. Lord God, with gratitude for all your goodness, we come to you in prayer. For our family and friends, for our sisters and brothers in faith, we thank you for the gifts of joy that we celebrate, softball games and times of recreation, times outside enjoying your creation, times visiting, remembering Susan at Cedarhurst. We pray, Lord, that you remember those who are dear to us, who are facing health and life challenges. Wrap them, Lord, in your steadfast love. Heal them, sustain them. Sustain them in times of trouble and keep them always in your care. We pray, Lord, for your continued healing for Wesley and John and Bill. We pray for Glenda and Dean's niece and the skill of her surgeons. We pray for Judy and her test results and the wisdom of her doctors. We pray, Lord, for the residents and employees at the Open Door and at Willowcrest. Protect them and heal them. And dear Lord, we pray especially right now for Bob and Lori. It is so difficult to, for us to hear this news and to be yet so far from them. But yet, Lord, we know that you are near, that your spirit surrounds them. We pray, Lord, that you give their doctors the wisdom they need. We pray that your healing hand might be upon them, Lord, and walk with them each day during this difficult time. We entrust them to your care. Lord, we pray that you remember your church. Empower us to proclaim the gospel. Strengthen us in our conviction and make us imitators of the Lord. Be with and guide the work of the pastor nominating committee. Help us to trust in your plan for the future of this church. Lord, remember all the victims of natural disasters, the, the victims of violence and racism, the victims and the indirect victims of the coronavirus. Remember our nurses and doctors, our students and teachers. Lord, send out your spirit to renew the earth. Welcome all people into your house and let your love be known in all the world, that all glory might be given to you. 
Lord, hear our prayer and hear us now as we pray the prayer that Jesus Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. God loves a person who is a cheerful giver. Decide in your own heart what gift you might offer to God who is so generously given to us. You may place your gifts in the offering plates by the door. You may give electronically. You may send it in the mail. In thanksgiving for all your gifts, we bow our heads now in prayer. Holy God, you have made us in your image, and we belong to you alone. Therefore, we offer ourselves to you in service, in love, and in praise. Use us, Lord, for the glory of your realm. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory be to God.
Father, Spirit, Risen Son, glory be to God. Leave here not trying to be the hero, but live with God as your hero so that indeed glory might be given to God forever and ever. And now, may the amazing grace of Jesus Christ our Lord and the extravagant love of God the Father and the intimate friendship of the Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen.